Hey guys, Ross with RV Tips and Travels. In today's video, we're gonna show you how to winterize a camper using the compressed air method. This video is the third episode in a winterizing masterclass series. The second video is a walkthrough of how we winterize our camper using antifreeze. And the first video is a discussion style video that walks you through the pros and cons of winterizing using each method. I'll put links down in the video description to the other videos in this series if you want to go ahead and check those out. This is the Compressed Air Winterizing Masterclass. Okay, we have a lot to cover, but understand no matter where you get your winterizing information, even if that's from this video, you should always make sure you are at least covering the recommended steps that are in your owner's manual. Winterizing is just the process of getting all the water out of your lines and tanks so it doesn't freeze, expand, and damage the plumbing lines, the valves, the fittings, or any other components. The process is absolutely necessary if your camper is exposed to freezing temperatures over the winter and you are a seasonal camper or weekend warrior who's not using your camper during that time. There are primarily two ways to winterize an RV. The first method is using antifreeze. This method involves running RV safe antifreeze through the lines to push all the water out. The antifreeze will then stay in the lines until you de-winterize in the spring. The other option is to use compressed air to blow all the water out of the lines. Both of these methods will do the job, but there are differences in the two. In certain situations, owner's manuals make no mention of winterizing certain areas of the plumbing system, which got me thinking. We've all seen posts from someone online whose camper is leaking water all over the floor, but we rarely see that discussion go in the direction of trying to find out what actually happened. Instead, it's chalked up to crappy plastic fittings, or the manufacturer didn't tighten something during the production process. Those may be the reasons in some cases, but there are certain situations where it could be from not properly winterizing your RV. I just think that's a logical reason why some people get leaks. Additionally, owner's manuals don't give you much information past winterizing the plumbing system in your RV. But there really is a list of other things you should consider when winterizing your RV. We're going to cover all of those things. Now I would recommend watching the entire video through at least once before you winterize your camper so you know the time frame, the tools, and the materials that are needed. We'll be demonstrating on a 2018 Grand Design Imagine 2150 RB. We have the standard connection panel in our trailer, but you may have a different connection panel. You may have a different RV altogether. That's okay, the process basically remains the same. The location of the valves, water pump, and faucets may be different, but if you understand the principle of how to winterize, you can apply this process to any RV. Also, you'll need to empty your waste tanks at some point during this process, and always dump your waste tanks according to your local laws and using appropriate facilities. I can't possibly tell you what's legal in your area or what chemicals you can or can't put in your specific septic tank, but you will need to empty those tanks, and it's something you should have in place before you start the process. In addition to that, you will be starting this process with your black and gray tank valves closed. So let's get started. We're gonna cover the plumbing system first. First, connect your shore power and open all your slides so you have access to all the areas inside your RV. Next, we need to empty the water heater because that's one component we can drain and isolate from the water system. Your water pump should be turned off right now. And before we drain the water heater, open your pressure release valve first. If you remove the drain under pressure, you're going to get drenched and possibly burned if your water heater was on recently. Next, we can remove the drain plug I see a lot of people say they have issues getting to this thing easily, but if you just use some ratchet extensions, it's fairly easy to get to. Drain all the water out of your water heater. Now listen, there may still be a small amount of water at the bottom of your water heater tank. However, that amount is going to be so small that if it does freeze and expand, it's not going to expand enough to do any damage inside your water heater tank. Once the water heater is empty, you can go ahead and close your pressure relief valve. Now, some folks will leave the drain plug out to help promote evaporation of the little bit of water that may be left in your water heater. Some people will put the plug back in to keep bugs out. Either option is perfectly fine. What I do is I'll take a paper towel 
and just kind of put it inside that water heater drain. It will still allow airflow, plus it will keep any bugs from getting in your water heater. Before you head back in, you can now open your low point drains. Your low point drains are the lowest point on your pressurized plumbing system. Meaning by opening those, you're gonna drain most of the water out of your system. Now, low point drains will not drain your fresh water tank or your waste tanks. We're gonna get to those later. Go ahead and close the low point drains once they're empty. And since I'm still outside my camper and close by, I'm going to open the drain on my fresh water tank. Once your fresh water tank is empty, leave your fresh water tank drain open. That's going to come into play later on in the process. Now the water heater is empty and most of the plumbing lines are empty. So we're going to bypass our water heater so we can run compressed air through the plumbing lines. In most cases, these valves will be located at your water heater. Now your setup may look a little bit different and I'll cover two of the most popular bypass valve setups in a second, but let me start with a three valve system, which is what we have. Okay, so this is my water heater. It's a three valve setup and let me explain how this works under normal operation first. So you have water that comes up through this line here. This valve is open because it's parallel with the line. Water goes into the water heater here, gets heated up inside the water heater comes out this line, which is also open. This valve right here is open because it's parallel with the line and then goes up here and out to all your hot water faucets. Turn these valves so they are closed or perpendicular with the line they are on. Now all flow into and out of the water heater is eliminated because incoming water or compressed air in this case stops at this closed valve and never enters the water heater. However, we still need to get compressed air over to the hot side since we need to winterize the hot faucets too. We need to channel this air past the water heater and to the hot lines through what's commonly called the crossover line. Currently it is perpendicular with the line that it's on, which again is closed. Let's open that valve by turning it parallel to the line. Now our airflow comes from the cold side through the crossover line and out to the hot faucets, completely bypassing the water heater. Now, a lot of manufacturers are also using a two valve setup. So let me explain that because I'm sure there's a bunch of you guys that have that type of setup on your camper. Just like a three valve setup, you have water coming from your tank or your city water connection up to here. This type of valve when pointed at the water heater directs the flow of water towards the water heater and blocks the flow of water going into the crossover line. Then the water is heated and comes out of the hot side valve, which is positioned the same way as the cold valve and then out to the hot water faucets. To bypass the water heater on a two valve system, you simply point the valves in the direction of the line that they're on. Cold water flow or air in this situation now comes up to this valve, but is now directed through the crossover line back down to the hot water side and not the water heater, again, completely bypassing the water heater. There are other variations out there, but these are two of the more common setups that you're going to see. Your owner's manual should have a very clear diagram on how to bypass your water heater if you're still a little bit confused. And as always, if you have any questions at this point, just put them down in the comments below. The water heater is now bypassed. Now we can start running compressed air through all the lines that normally see water during the camping season. We're going to cover what I call all the secondary lines first, because there's something I wanna show you before we run air through the primary lines. The first spot is the fresh tank fill on your connection panel that runs water over to your fresh tank. Now, if you use your fresh water tank fill during the camping season, there's probably water still in that line that we need to get out. Grab your air compressor and set it to 45 PSI max. You'll wanna pick up a fitting like this one too. I'll put a link to this down in the video description along with all the other products we use in this video in case you wanna check those out. Basically, this fitting will allow you to connect a standard female air compressor fitting over to a garden hose inlet, just like the one that you have on your connection panel. It's also a good idea to get some type of inline air filter on your air compressor so you're not blowing water or oil back into your lines. Connect the fitting between your air compressor line and your connection panel and blow air through this line. Now, if you remember a couple steps ago, we left the fresh water tank drain open. So if there's any water in this line, you're going to see it come out of the bottom of the tank drain. All you gotta do is just run air through this line until you don't see any more water coming out of the bottom of your fresh water tank. Another line is your fresh tank gravity fill, if you have one. Now, yes, this line does run downhill and any water that's in there is probably just droplets, but it can't hurt to run a little bit of compressed air down through that line to make sure there's nothing sitting in there. 
Another line that may have water in it is your black tank flush port. Just go ahead and connect your air compressor to your black tank flush port and blow air through there for about 30 seconds. That should get all the water out. I wanna take a quick second to mention any specialty or aftermarket equipment that a few of you may have in your RVs. Any water filtration systems on your plumbing lines should be removed or bypassed at this point in time. It is important though that if you bypass these filters, you need to make sure they are either blown out or free of water. If you have any other aftermarket or specialty equipment, like an aqua hot system or a washing machine, you need to refer to the owner's manuals for those items at this point in time in the process as well. It would make for a very long video that wouldn't apply to the majority of you guys if I were to cover all the aftermarket or specialty equipment options that could be tied to plumbing, especially since, for example, there are different winterizing methods for different models of washing machines. That does it for the secondary lines. Now on to the primary lines, which are your faucets, your toilet, your showers, and your spray ports. Now I wanna take a quick second to show you how and why we're going to run air through the primary lines the way that we do. Reason is when you run air through the city water connection, it will not push the water out of the water pump, and that is a step that we need to do. Now this applies to the standard panel, but if you have a more complex panel like the Nautilus system, in most cases you can access all the lines from the panel itself by just switching the valves in different configurations. So before we start running air through all the lines, I wanna show you guys this drawing that I made up. Please excuse the crudity of this model. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Now it's very rough and it can vary a little bit depending on your camper, but the principle is gonna be the same for all campers. There's two places to introduce water into your plumbing system. One is at the city water connection and one is at the fresh tank fill connection. The fresh tank fill has a line that runs from your connection panel over to your water tank and we've already blown out this line. So we're good here, however, there's another line inside your tank that runs water up to the water pump and then out to your shower, sinks, and toilets. Now, since we can't get inside this water tank to run air through this line going into the water pump and out to the faucets, is we're gonna use our winterizing hose and push some air through here to clear this hose out and to clear out any water that's in your water pump. Running air through the city water line will not push air out of your water pump because there's most likely a check valve here. Also, water pumps will act as a check valve, so airflow will not be allowed to go backwards through the water pump, even though it will be able to go through forward. Now this line right here, there's no way to get air through that line and push the water out that goes down into the water tank, unless you're going to simply disconnect it from your water pump and run air through that line. But this is straight downhill, so there shouldn't be any water in there, so you shouldn't have to worry about that line. You still want to get the air out of the water pump. So the easiest way to do that is just to run some compressed air through this winterizing hose, through this water pump, and out to this line. Now we don't have to do this for every faucet, sink, or toilet, because as you see, these lines connect. And it may not be right here in your camper, but it will be somewhere eventually before your shower, sinks, and toilet lines all split. So the first thing we're gonna do is run air through this winterizing hose, through the water pump to get all the water out of the water pump, and up to this line here. Mine is below the kitchen sink countertop. Some of you with more complex panels like the Nautilus system might have the pump right at the connection panel. And if that's the case, you're just gonna need to switch your valves over to winterize mode. On the water pump, you should see a hose that's a couple feet in length with a cap on it. That is your antifreeze hose. Under normal operation, the pump draws water from the tank through this line into the pump and out to your faucets. There is a valve on your water pump that should be in line with the freshwater tank, which allows flow from the freshwater tank through your water pump, but also blocking flow to this antifreeze hose. Just turn this valve so it's pointing in line with the antifreeze hose, which will open flow from the hose and close flow from the tank. Open one of your faucets, then turn on your water pump. Remove the cap from the antifreeze hose. Now I don't have the correct fitting to do this because I don't use the compressed air method to winterize my RV, but you're gonna wanna blow air through this antifreeze line into the water pump so it goes out of the water pump, out of the hose behind the water pump, 
and eventually to where the city water connection line meets. You can go ahead and turn the water pump off. If your water pump has a water filter on it, go ahead and take that off and make sure there's no water in there as well. As you can see, even after blowing air through the water pump, there's still a little bit of water left in this filter. So I'm just gonna shake that out and then you can go ahead and put that back on. The last step of running compressed air through the plumbing lines is hooking up compressed air to the city water connection and blowing it out through all of the faucets. You can start at any faucet by opening the cold side first. Now the key here is patience. You wanna stay at that faucet until all the water that you see come out comes out. It may take a while, but once all that water has come out, close the cold valve and open the hot side of that faucet. Once that faucet is done and there's no more water coming out of the line, complete this process at all the other sinks, showers, toilets, or any water faucets you have inside the RV. Next, go outside and don't forget to run air through all the sinks or spray ports that you have on the outside of the RV. And last, just crack open your low point drains to make sure there's no water in there either. If you haven't already, you've probably noticed that I added valves to my low point drains. I'll put a link to these down below. These will save you a lot of time when winterizing, dewinterizing, and sanitizing your RV. Once all the lines are free of water, go ahead and take some antifreeze and pour it into your sink drains so that it fills the P-traps. You'll also want to cover the ball valve on the toilet to help keep the ball valve seal from drying out over the winter. Over time, ball valve seals can leak. So every month or so over the winter, I'll come in and just check the antifreeze level inside my toilet. And if you notice that it's dropped, you can just add a little bit more antifreeze. Also, depending on the temperature inside your camper, you may notice that the antifreeze inside the toilet over the ball valve will slush up over the winter. This is completely normal. It may slush up a little bit, but it's not going to completely freeze. In our antifreeze version video, I talk about the differences between the different types of available antifreeze out there. Now, even though in the compressed air version, we're not putting antifreeze in anything but exit lines of the plumbing system, it is still worth mentioning that propylene glycol antifreeze versus ethanol or alcohol antifreeze is a little bit better for rubber seals like the seal on your ball valve. The next step is to drain your black and gray tanks. We've been asked in the past if it's okay to put some antifreeze in your waste tanks, and the short answer is yes. But just like the water heater, there's gonna be such a small amount of water in your waste tanks after draining them that even if it does freeze and expand, it's not gonna do any damage. So if you want my opinion, drain your tanks completely, close the drain valves, and call it a day. We've never had a problem doing it that way. You can also close your freshwater tank drain at this point in time. Some people will leave it open to allow it to breathe. We just close it so no bugs get in there. The plumbing is now complete, but I wanna to talk to you guys about some other things that you should be considering when winterizing that don't have to do with the plumbing. Cold temperatures can damage batteries and cause them to crack open. I remove all batteries from my RV. That includes the 12 volt DC battery that's up front that runs all your DC powered components along with all the small batteries and smoke detectors, remote controls, flashlights, power tool batteries, and anything else that is battery powered. If you keep an inventory of extra batteries in your RV, make sure you remove those as well. Remove all food and drink items from your camper over the winter. Now I know that's common sense, but don't forget the salt, pepper, spices, cooking oils, all those things. You don't wanna give animals or insects any reason to come into your RV over the winter. You'll also want to remove any liquid that could potentially freeze. That means cleaners, soaps, shampoos, tank treatments, anything that is liquid that could potentially freeze, take it out. Take out your first aid kit as well. There may be liquids, ointments, treatments, or other medicines that you don't want to expose to freezing temperatures. Close up all windows and vents that lead to the outside. That will include your skylight vents and the exhaust vent over top of your stove, so there's less of a chance for anything to get in over the winter. Leave your fridge doors open or install those plastic door cards that keep them cracked open. If the doors are closed, condensation can build up in your fridge due to temperature differences and mold could start to grow inside your fridge. Make sure to leave your stabilizer jacks up. If one of your tires suddenly lose air, it's going to put excess pressure on those stabilizer jacks and we all know stabilizer jacks are not meant to take excessive pressure. Another thing to consider, if you store your RV at an off-site storage facility, it might be a good idea to remove anything that has monetary or sentimental value over the winter. I have one more tip, but before we get to that, 
If you guys enjoyed the video and you thought it was helpful, return the favor, hit that like button down below, and we hope you consider subscribing and turning on notifications so you never miss a video. And my last tip is this, when I'm winterizing, I will close up my RV as if I'm leaving a campground. If for any emergency I need to move my camper over the winter, I can just simply hook up, remove the chalks, and go. I'll put all the steps we discussed today in a checklist down below in the video description so you can copy them if you'd like. Let us know your winterizing successes or failures down in the comments below. We'd love to hear from you guys. That's it. Thanks for watching, guys. Until next time, happy camping. I'll put links down. I'll put links in the... I'll put links down. Going to be running compressed air through all the... The last step of this process, the last step of running air through the... If your water pump has a water filter on it too, you want to take this thing off. If your water pump has an... Leave your fridge, leave your fridge door along with everything else.